In this video, we'll take a detailed look on how to wire Aphone's standard GT multi-tenant system for 48 apartments or less. The primary parts for the back-end equipment of the GT audio video system is the GT VBC for video distribution and GT BC for audio distribution. There are two primary ways to wire the standard GT system. On the left-hand side, you'll see what we call the home run method, and on the right-hand side, you'll see what's called the loop method. When using either way of wiring the system, you're limited to six trunk lines on the output of the GT VBC, and each trunk line is limited to a maximum of 25 apartments. Let's take a closer look how we wire these. First, let's take a look at the parts needed for the installation. On the left-hand side, you'll see the GT DMBN entrance panel. Then you'll see in the center of the page a PS2420UL. And in the right-hand corner, you'll see a GTWDP, which can be used in lieu of wire nuts. Above that, you'll see the GTBC, which is the audio distribution or amplifier unit. And above that, you have the GTVBC, which is the... Uh, video distribution or amplifier unit. Now let's take a look at the back of the entry panel. On the right hand side you'll see a schematic of all the connectors on the back of the unit. What we'll do now is we'll concentrate on the most important connectors that are used to set the system up. But first if you're using two entry panels each panel must be given a unique ID. In order to do this, you can follow the chart below and flip the dip switches to the proper IDs. Once the entry panel IDs are set, let's take a close look at the connectors on the back of the unit. The most important connectors are on the top, A1 and A2, which is used for your video trunk line termination. Then you have ELM and ELC, ELB, and that's going to be for your lock connection. Then you have R1 and R2, which is used for your audio trunk termination. And then you have plus and minus DC volts for your power. Okay, let's start building our system. The first thing we're going to add is a GTBC. Again, that's the audio distribution or amplifier. After that, we're going to add the GTVBC, which is your video distributor or amplifier. Now let's add our power supply, a PS2420UL. Now we'll start wiring our system. We'll take the plus and minus from the entry panel and put that directly to our first PS2420. Now we'll take another PS2420 to power our back end, our GTBC and VBC. So we'll throw a wire in and we'll share this power supply with the set of BC and VBCs. Now let's start adding our trunk lines. We'll start with the audio trunk line. We'll take R1 and R2 from the entrance panel, and we'll run it to a GTWDP distribution point. And now we'll take a wire from the distribution point up to the GTBC R1 and R2. Okay, now we'll add our video trunk line. We'll take A1 and A2 from the entry panel, and bring it over to the GT VBC input side, A1 and A2. We have finished the installation of the back-end equipment for the GT system. Most integrators will mount this equipment onto a board or put it into a lock box. Now, let's start installing our apartment stations. The first thing you need to decide is how you're going to program the system. There are two ways to program it. One is called the handshake method, when you need two technicians, one at the entry panel and one in each individual apartment, and you need to make a mechanical handshake with the system. The next method is called the dip switch method. With this method, each individual apartment gets its own unique ID, which is set by switching the dip switches on the back of the units. Each special dip switch setting has an associated software ID, which must be added with our software tool to the system. 
These software IDs get placed in the Unit Link ID settings in the software tool. Please take a moment to read these three examples and get a better grasp of the concept. Now we'll start adding our apartment stations. The first method we're going to concentrate on is the loop method. On the right hand side you'll see a schematic of our loop wiring diagram. We'll go over this in detail by each terminal connection. First, let's take a look at the connectors on the back of the tenant stations. We're going to concentrate on the most important ones, B1 and B2 for your video trunk, R1 and R2 for your audio trunk. Here's a wiring diagram with two trunk lines, one looped and one home run. We're going to concentrate on the right-hand side loop wiring. Now we'll add our first apartment station. As you can see, we have B1 and B2. That's going to be used for your video trunk line. And R1 and R2, which is going to be used for your audio trunk line. Let's add our audio trunk line. We'll take R1 and R2 from our GTWDP and run it to the first apartment station, R1 and R2. Then we'll add our video trunk line. We'll take B1 and B2 from the GTVBC and run it over to B1 and B2 of our first tenant station. Now if you notice, B1 and B2, R1 and R2 have inputs and outputs. All we need to do is start adding more tenant stations to the output and every station we add our trunk line grows. The important thing to know is you cannot exceed 25 apartments on an individual trunk line. The last unit on every trunk line needs to have the video terminated. You do this by taking the dip switch on the back of the unit, AB, and put it in the A position. You have five remaining outputs on your GTVBC. You can continue adding trunk lines as needed. Just remember not to exceed 25 apartments per trunk line and do not exceed 48 apartments per pair of GTBC and VBCs. Now we're going to take a look on how to use the home run method to wire the GT system. The same rules apply with the home run system as it does with the loop system. You cannot go over 25 apartments on an individual trunk line. We're going to be utilizing B1 and B2, which is the video trunk line connectors, and R1 and R2, which is the audio connectors for the tenant stations. When using the home run method, we need to add a new product called the GT4Z. The GT4Z is designed to support up to four apartments. You cannot take a loop wire and terminate it on the GT4Z. It can only support an individual apartment off of each output. That being said, let's start adding our apartment stations. The first thing we want to do is add our audio trunk line. We're going to take R1 and R2 from the GTWDP and run it to R1 and R2 of the GT4Z. Then we're going to add our video trunk line, B1 and B2 from the GTVBC, over to our GT4Z input. Now let's add our audio trunk line from our GT4Z to our tenant station, utilizing R1 and R2 output. Now let's add our video trunk line to our tenant station, utilizing B1 and B2 from the GT4Z to our tenant station. Now utilizing the line output on the GT4Z, you can add another GT4Z and four more apartments. You can repeat this process five more times to complete your trunk line. Remember, you can't have more than 25 apartments on an individual trunk line. Okay, so let's review. You cannot exceed more than 25 apartments or six GT4Z units on one trunk line. And you can't have more than 48 apartment stations connected to a set of GTBC and VBCs. If you follow these guidelines, you should be all set.
Once you've added your last GT4Z on a specific trunk line, that GT4Z must be terminated. To terminate your GT4Z, please turn the switch AB to the A position. Now let's go over how to install our locks. When you're installing a lock, we're going to concentrate on three terminals on the back of the entry panel. The ELM, ELC, and ELB. A phone can support the triggering of an electronic strike or a mag lock. Let's take a look how to install the electronic strike. Okay, let's hook up a standard electric strike. We're going to use two connectors on the back of the entry panel, the ELC and the ELM. First, we'll take the ELM and run a wire from it to your electronic door strike. Now, from the other side of your electronic door strike, go to the power supply for the strike. Please use a third-party power supply. Do not share power with the A-Phone system. The other side of your power supply goes to ELC. The circuit you've created is known as an open circuit. So there's no electricity running through your electronic strike until the tenant in the apartment presses the key button on the tenant station. When that is done, it will close the circuit between ELC and ELM and electricity Electricity will flow through your electronic door strike and unlock the door. Now let's hook up a mag lock. Now we're going to use two different connectors, the ELC and the ELB. First, we'll take a wire from the ELC on the back of the door station and go to one side of your mag lock. The other side of the mag lock will go to your power supply. Again, please use a third-party power supply. Do not share the power with the iPhone system. The other side of the power supply is going to go to ELB. The circuit you just created is considered a closed circuit, which means there's always electricity running through ELC, the maglock, and ELB. So the maglock is always energized. And the door is locked. The only way to unlock the door is when a person in an apartment presses the key button on a tenant station. That will break the circuit cutting off the electricity to the magnet lock, and the mag lock will now be open, and someone can enter the building. When you're designing your system, please keep an eye on this wiring distance chart so you can decide where you put your components. Please stay within the distance ranges on this chart. When installing an A-Phone system, if you use A-Phone wire, it will add an extra one-year warranty to your system. I hope you found this video helpful. If you need more resources, please take a look at the A-Phone website. Thank you.